Oh, yo, 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 We have a similar population, we've got dangerous wildlife, and we're both really, 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 really hot. Anyway, if you saw the title, that means I'm going into the Emu War by Oversimplified. So I am familiar with the Emu War. Um, <laughs> I think there were some veterans from World War I that were tasked on eliminating uh, <laughs> eliminating a large uh, portion of emus that were ravaging uh, western australia especially so yeah i'm pretty excited to watch the oversimplified version it's probably gonna be so stupid <laughs> oh informative but stupid informative but stupid i think that oversimplifies oversimplified eh eh all right let's get started this is australia for the man who imagines being strangled by a tarantula while a kangaroo breaks his kneecaps and thinks, mmm, yes please. For the yes, man who please. pictures himself being eaten by a snake in the burning outback while eating a Vegemite sandwich and thinks, mmm, yes please. Wow, okay. And that okay. man was Governor Arthur Never Phillip, tried Vegemite, who landed in way. Eastern Australia in 1788, presumably saw a dingo being eaten by a crocodile, being eaten by a death adder, being eaten by a koala, being eaten by Mel Gibson, and thought to himself, yes, good. <laughs> Okay, damn, it just went straight into the Australian wildlife. Yes, guys, um, there is some dangerous wildlife in Australia, but I feel like a bunch of people just think, you know, as soon as they step foot in Australia, they're just going to be ambushed by, like, all this, all these, like, poisonous snakes and insects and dangerous wildlife. <laughs> it's, come on, guys, it's, it's, it's not that bad. Now I know what you're thinking, but oversimplified, the British didn't discover Australia, the Vikings did. And you'd be what? wrong. I'm not sure why you'd think that. Oh. But hey, if you love Vikings so much, then why <laughs> yeah, don't I was like, you what the hell? check out today's sponsor? Okay, buy, I had to skip buy. over that. Man, this is great. The market will continue to grow forever. But what if it doesn't? Oh crap, I never thought of that. Sell, sell. <laughs> and the stock market crashed, which led to economic downturn, oh, yeah. which meant banks wouldn't lend the anyone any money, which led to more economic downturn, which meant everyone stopped buying stuff, which led to more economic downturn. And hey, what if all the crops in the Great Plains were destroyed in a drought and then a big dust storm engulfed the area? That's right, more economic downturn. And in an effort yeah. to combat the crisis, America mm -hmm. began imposing tariffs on foreign imports, which made the economic downturn go global, and the earth got really depressed. Yeah, that, the Great Depression, that affected the entire world, and um, it actually hit Germany really bad too. And then, of course, that eventually um, contributed to the rise of the Nazi party, but that's a, that's a whole other story. Anyway. But one nation that was hit harder than you most okay, by bro? the <laughs> Australia. The problem for Australia was mm -hmm. that it relied heavily on its yeah, export it Australia industries, bad too. and in the current economic climate, no one was buying. To make things worse, Australia had introduced its own currency and pegged it onto the gold standard via the British pound. Mm. But then the UK started messing with its own peg on the gold standard, and if this is starting to sound Damn. confusing, then let me oversimplify it for you. Hey UK, looks like my car is broken down. Want to give me a tow? No problem, friend. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's got him. <laughs> I don't think he's gonna have him. <laughs> yeah, nope. <laughs> he just drove straight off a cliff. <laughs> More economic downturn. The yeah. point I'm trying to make is things weren't good, and in particular, it was Australia's farmers that were suffering most. After the First World War, Australia had given returning veterans land for farming, but with the current economic mm. crisis, the farmers just weren't making enough money, and many left to go find work in the cities. But for those who remained, things were about to get even worse. Oh, the dreaded emu. <laughs> Before we get into that, it's time for some cultural exchange. My national bird is the bald eagle. It's a strong patriotic yeah. symbol of America and a deeply valued go and bald protected eagle. species. My national bird is the peafowl. It's a beautiful creature whose oh, vivid colors represent India, so we list it as a protected species. My national bird is the emu, and it's a pest. <laughs> also bloody delicious. Oh, damn. Emus, <laughs> 6 feet tall, 90 to 120 pounds, and able to run at speeds up to 40 miles per hour, usually yeah, return to damn. the coast after their breeding season. Yeah, actually, I've, I've seen a couple of emus in, in, a, in some farms and ranches in Texas. You can find all kinds of animals in Texas. I remember I was driving by a ranch that was keeping a bunch of horses and there was a zebra among them all. 
And I was passing by in my car and I was like, hey, hey, zebra, what are you doing there? I mean, you know damn well that rancher just bought it to mess with people, seriously. Anyway. But suddenly they found Western Australia full of lush, wet farmland. Oh my, look at all this delicious wheat that just so happens to be growing here in large quantities. Yeah, hey guys, get a load of this. You know, my, look at all this delicious wheat that just so happens to be growing here in large quantities. Yeah, look at all this delicious wheat that just so happens to be growing here in large quantities. Yeah, look at all this delicious wheat that just so happens to be growing here in large quantities. Yeah, look at all this delicious wheat that just so happens to be growing here in large quantities. Yeah, look at all this delicious wheat that just so happens to be growing here in large quantities. Yeah, look at all this delicious wheat that just so happens to be growing here in large quantities. Yeah, look at all this delicious wheat that just so happens to be growing here in large quantities. Who left this big hole in the fence? Guys, get oh, out of this! Damn. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really oh, yeah. oh, yeah, the rabbits come to finish it off. <laughs> God, poor farmers. <sighs> what a lovely morning for some farming. What? Those damned emus, they have it in for me. They're bullies. <laughs> They're nothing but bullies. Calm down, Bruce. They're just animals. It's not personal. Hey, Farmer Bruce, where did you find that hat? The toilet? <laughs> It just got personal. Yes. 20,000 <laughs> emus cost the already okay. struggling farmers millions more pounds in lost crops and damages. The situation couldn't continue like this. Something had to be done. So in 1932, the farmers turned to the government for help. You'd think they'd go to the Minister of Agriculture, but these farmers said no. This is a job <laughs> nope, for the military. They went to the military, so they yeah. went to George <laughs> Pierce, the Minister of Defense. That's right. Australia was to go to war with the emus. Oh, it's on. But not everyone it is was on. happy with the idea. This is barbaric. We can't go slaughtering thousands of our own national bird. Oh, come on, guys. The machine guns will make it quick and painless. Machine guns? <laughs> You're using machine guns? This is animal cruelty. Look, I know it's unusual, but it's not like we're poachers turning the birds into feather hats. Think of the benefits. It'll be good target practice for our boys. The government can show it took action. Plus, I can get myself a nice new feather hat. Uh, did I say feather hat? <laughs> that was I meant I want to <laughs> gather chat with you. About getting you all some nice new feather hats. Uh, did I say feather hats? I meant I want to wage what the fuck? terror at these emus and turn them all into feather hats. Damn it. Of course, wow. Pierce first made the farmers sign an agreement saying that they would pay for the whole thing and that Pierce wouldn't take any of the blame if the operation that was clearly very stupid turned out to <laughs> indeed be stupid. And the operation went mm. ahead. Major GPW I Meredith we'll were right? sent with two Lewis machine guns to hunt down and take out the evil emu population in Western Australia. Target spotted. Well, was it an emu? No, sir. It's an emo. Damn it, Jones. Learn your vowels. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, okay. emu, it looks emo, like the humans are yeah, coming for us. But check this out. <laughs> I've come up with an amazing plan. See if you can follow me here, okay? When they approach, we run away. Sir, you're a genius. Pierce sent the camera crew yeah. along with the machine gunners to capture some plan. good old propaganda for the government. And the first battle took place in November at Campion. The men spotted first a mob battle. of emus from a distance. I so love they how they make it out to like a serious war fire. that was happening. The emus split up into smaller groups and ran in every direction. The men were only able to kill what they called a number of birds. But the vast majority got away. Failure. Cut. <laughs> Surprisingly, oh, many of the emus were able to take multiple bullets, but still run at full speed to safety, causing Meredith to compare them to tanks, saying if we had a military division with the bullet-carrying capacity of these birds, yeah, you don't mess around with emus any and, army and in the world. They don't mess around okay, either. We need to get closer. No, you idiots, <laughs> not to me, fuck? to the emus. Oh, sorry. No, no. I like it. <laughs> so next, they tried sneaking up Maybe on a large cold. number of emus no, near a local dam <laughs> and firing at short range. Maybe the men were just unlucky, but my professional opinion says the emus were magic. Because both guns okay. jammed after just 12 emus were killed, and once again, the rest got away. Cut! <laughs> the men were feeling a little humiliated oh, after losing to a pack of discount ostriches. So they decided to move further south. Discount where the emus were ostriches, wow. And this time, they had a new strategy. <laughs> I like that. Okay, Jones, here's the plan. You mount the machine gun in the back, I'll chase the emus, you shoot. <laughs> Got it? Got it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm gonna shove that camera up your- <laughs> The operation was- <laughs> That actually did happen though. A, a whole bunch of mishaps like that happened and- <laughs> It just added to like the, the ridiculousness of the whole operation, oh my god. <laughs> 
uh, oversimplified is certainly not disappointing. The fiasco <laughs> and the press had a field day. More emos. In Parliament, Pierce was lambasted, and an opposition party member suggested that medals should be handed out to the emus, who had won every Ooh. round so far. Pierce, feeling quite humiliated, called the operation yeah. off. But four days later, the farmers approached again and said, Hey man, the emus are still eating all our crops. Can you send the army back out here? And Pierce was like, Yeah, okay. So the operation <laughs> was back on for round two. And this time Meredith oh, and his men had learned the emu's guerrilla tactics and were much more successful, with reports suggesting the men were cutting down 300 emus every week. I hope you boys are getting great done. footage of this. What on earth are you filming? <laughs> Despite the success, what the, media the had fuck lost was that? The whole what? Thing, but with a thousand Is emus that... killed... Was that Mel Gibson? Kind of looked like Mel Gibson. Pierce finally ended the operation and returned to Parliament declaring victory for the humans. So there <laughs> the were 20,000 emus, emus out there destroying crops, and you've killed a thousand. Mm-hmm. Meaning there's still 19,000 emus out there. Yep. And in addition, <laughs> you've burned through 10,000 rounds That's... of ammunition. Uh-huh. Damn. You wasted 10 rounds per confirmed kill. That's right. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and call this one for the oh, emus. Oh, damn. That is... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What? <laughs> what? So in the end, the emus won Dude. the Great Emu War of 1932. That's a fuck And the emus continued to wreak havoc on the farmers for years to come. The government Wait, what the fuck? Is that guy holding a kangaroo? Okay, that has got to be <laughs> one of the most Australian pictures I've ever seen. That is freaking awesome. Wow. <laughs> yes. Just, yeah, you don't see that every day. Wow. Introduced a bounty system, which saw some success. But for a moment, let's take some time to remember the brave men who said goodbye to their families and risked their lives <laughs> to take on the great, evil, emu population in Western Australia. But even more importantly, let's think of the friends they made, the bond they created, and the memories they shared. <laughs> me oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> In memory of those brave, brave soldiers that <laughs> went up against the dreaded emus. <laughs> hey, uh, guys, I solved the emu crisis. Really? How? I just made some better fences. <laughs> yeah, that's really all it took. <laughs> oh, man, that was so good. That was so good. Well, guys, that was the Emu War by Oversimplified, and it was it was as good as I expected. Oh man, certainly they did, uh, he did not disappoint. I actually remember coming across a video of a guy tackling an emu in Texas, <laughs> and that video was hilarious. Um, if I can find that one, I'll put it in the description. If you're an Australian, what's worse, the emus or the magpies? The answer. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me, guys. Um, please don't forget to like, subscribe, do all that good stuff below. And um, yeah, let, uh, keep giving me suggestions on what you would like for me to react to next. And um, yeah, I will see you guys in the next video.